Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live today. It's Saturday, March the 17th, 2012. Some of us celebrate St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day for everyone. Our topic today is Screencasting 101. Uh, our special guest today is Shambles Guru, also known as Chris Smith, and I'll talk about Chris in just a minute. Today's session is a joint webinar with the Moodle Moot Screencasting 101 from Learn Now BC. So you're going to send some people in the chat, and I'm very happy to see you with the letter MM in front of them. That signifies that they are uh, in the session, and we really send out an invitation to anyone here who hasn't uh, signed up. It is free to register, and I think in a minute, uh, Peggy might drop in the link to where to register. But you're not too late, and we've got great conversations and great sharings from people from all different aspects. And we have brand new screencasters who are uh, getting finding their way. And um, don't feel that if you don't know anything, it isn't a place for you. And don't think if you know a lot of things, it isn't a place for you, because we've got uh, great ideas. And I've already found about in the first uh, 12 hours, I've learned so many more th new things just by participating. So please take time to register with us today. A special thanks to Tammy Moore in the chat who provides closed captioning for us every Saturday. So if, you, if English is not your first language, please don't click on the CC for closed captioning, and you'll have a chance to watch you go through uh, the session today. So I'm going to move on to our next slide, which is about our website, live.classroom20.com. So this is a good heads up if that chat goes by too quickly. We have an archives and resources page in which we post uh, all the links for today's session. We put in an MP3 file and a embedded uh, MP4 file that you can watch the recording later on. Or we have the full Blackboard Collaborate recording, which allows you to see all the action that was going on during the session. Um, our recording does not include the chat, but the chat log is also posted. So we have a great way to keep you um, organize and with us after the session. And we also um, have a live binder link that I'll talk to you about in, in just a second. So we do have a way of recording everything for you in today's session. Now, I talked to you a few minutes ago about using the a laser pointer. You remember it's on the left-hand side of the whiteboard. You need to click on it, hold your mouse down, and drag it to where you're located in the world. Because we always find this is a great way to see the network we have and the sharing that we have. So give it a shot. And if you can't make that laser pointer work, then please just type it in the chat. Shambles is in Thailand. Uh, I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario, in Canada. Peggy's in Phoenix, Arizona. and. Uh, Kim is in San Antonio, Texas. So we I've never met any of my co-hosts or shambles face to face face any time, but I feel like I know them very, very well because I've been networking not only here but uh, in Twitter and all the different um, meets that we met up with each other. And I'm looking forward to knowing the new meet people a little bit more as we share um, our stories in the course. Thanks everybody. Oops. Lots of fun. Uh, I talked about the live binder. We'll have a link to this particular uh, resource for you. Not only do we use the links in the archives and resources page, but we have a separate link to using the live binder. So if you're not familiar with it, it's terrific because you can see all the re resources in a glance and just click on one of these, and each one will demonstrate um, a different resource. Some of them are movies. Um, just notice sometimes if you're clicking, if it was a PDF document, or even Firefox, it's going to download and you won't see it in your web browser. But then you always can see where the link is as well as it changes the links here. It corresponds to the link here. So it's a particularly great tool for curating resources. So what do you work again? You need that starburst. Again, so let's click on that and tell us. How old, young are you? Place yourself on the continuum using the starburst. Hmm. We're kind of heavy on the one, one end, which is terrific. I feel right in 
very comfortable here. Sometimes people think that when you get past the 50, you stop learning, but we clearly have shown you that's not the case. So there's a little picture here. If you can't figure out how to put that starburst in again, it's right there. So a lot of us are in the 50 stage. You know, what a great commendation for the fact that we're lifelong learners. Got to take a picture of that one, Kim and Peggy, because it's terrific. Yeah, I like wine, fine wine, for aging to perfection. That, ah, great. Thank you. Okay, we're now going to try and vote. So our next poll question is, what is the age grade range, the age or grade range of your students? A, elementary, B, middle school, C, high school, D, college, post-secondary, and E, adult learners. And if you have a couple of things going on and you can't figure out the poll questions, then let's just put it in the chat again. <laughs> Thanks to those who are using the, the whiteboard. OK, I'm going to post a responses so we have a, a sense of the numbers. OK. Some of you still haven't figured out this voting part, but that's OK. In the numbers that we have, we do have a larger number of people in the elementary pre-K to 6. So yes, Peggy, it's really hard to, to choose. We, we do these questions to give our, our guests a sense of who the audience is and then order them to help uh, uh, preface or phrase their presentation. But I know that Shambles has got a lot of information for all of those ADE um, areas. So let's go to the next poll question. I just have to change the uh, poll type. I'll be right with you. I think it's set. So our next question is, is English your native language? I think I've got a lot of votes here, so let's publish it to the whiteboard. Yes, three quarters of people here today are English as their uh, native language. Although some people, you know, might have grown up with two languages at the same time, but we asked about English. So let's go to our next poll question, poll question four. Have you created a screencast or video for your students? So it's yes if you have, and no if you haven't. Votes are still coming in here. Uh, publish the votes. Well, we're almost 50-50. A little shambles for people who have and who haven't. So as we said in the course, we hope that the new people are going to ask the questions they don't know, and the people who are experienced are going to be answering for us in the chat or coming to the mic or um, signing up to the course and sharing there as well. Great. Thanks, everybody, for participating in the poll questions. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce uh, Chris Smith, also known as Shambles Guru. And you know, Chef, Chris, uh, has his own unique way of speaking. And I'm going to challenge him this morning to go ahead and introduce himself so that I don't say anything that um, Shambles doesn't want me to say because we have been um, uh, sparring with words lately. So I'm giving you the mic, Chris. Welcome. Thanks very much for agreeing to share your expertise with us today. <laughs> uh, we can't wait for the session to start. <laughs> I'm speechless. That's the shortest introduction I've ever had. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right. Good Good evening, everybody. It's 11 o'clock my time in North Thailand. I'm in Chiang Mai. I'm about an hour's flight north of Bangkok. And I've been here since 2002. 
Now, I, I, I'd like to ask for some participation. Very quick one. Hi, Sean. I'm going to try and watch the chat. Uh, it, it'll be difficult because I'm a guy to multitask. But uh, in in uh, in chat, can you tell me the quality of your audio? Oh, I suppose it's my audio, but how can you listen to me? Like a 10 is really good, and a 0 is you can't hear me. And anybody that puts a zero in gets called to the front of the class because they're jokesters. A bit muffled. <laughs> That's what my mum used to say. If it's a bit muffled, it might be you just need to turn your volume down a little bit. Or if it's late at night for you, have a have a beer. That's that's good. I have also I have a live audience with me, which I didn't tell the moderators. Uh, and just to prove I've got a live audience with me, I'm going to ask them to make some noise, guys. No, oh, that's it. Oh. Not a not a <laughs> not a very active live audience. But I have to say that they've been out drinking because it is eleven o'clock at night, and they they just came back. Um, okay, let's jump straight in. Oh, London, great. London there. A bit colder in London than here. 39 degrees Celsius it was here today. Amazing. Um, <laughs> London calling. <laughs> Brilliant. Now I'm going to do something a little bit risky um, with this one. I want to use um, Prezi as the presentation tool. I don't know how many use Prezi. Um, I, Prezi is my preferred presentation tool now over PowerPoint. I actually found PowerPoint a bit restricting. It's a bit, for me, it's a bit linear. You start off at slide one and you go through. Although the clever PowerPoint people can actually put hyperlinks in to jump around from slides, but you rarely see that. Uh, oh, it's Prezi in year five and year six. Uh, it's just, when you hear me hesitate like this, it's just I'm trying to multitask. So I'm just going to share my Prezi on my screen. Fortunately, with Prezi, you can create it online or on your desktop. You can, there's a download you can get from Prezi. And, uh, um, but you can also download it onto your hard drive. And I've done that because I didn't want to be at the uh, mercy of, um, I didn't want to be at the mercy of the internet. So let's see if it comes up. Now this might, hang on to your chairs, boys and girls. This might actually uh, phase you out a little bit. Now, don't worry if it's a little bit fuzzy. Give it a second or two to res. No, Prezi don't have an app yet. Good point. I'd like, but I, oh, that's not true. Prezi do you have an app for the iPad. I use Prezi on the iPad, and it's brilliant. And only two weeks ago, they updated it so you can actually edit in the app on the iPad. You couldn't edit until about two weeks ago. So that's a, a new one. Actually, it looks brilliant on an iPad if you're in your classroom, especially if you can connect your iPad to the projector without any wires anymore. That's easy to do now. Uh, and I'll touch on that, actually, in, the, in this presentation. Um, does it work on iPad Classic? <laughs> does it work on iPad Zero with no sugar? Okay, let's let's go, <laughs> go into this. <laughs> okay, it's late at night. I'm getting delirious already. Now this presentation is actually live. The Prezi is live, and it, this is where it is. HTTP colon slash slash goo dot gl. That's the Google shortening URL. BHG82. Now these shortened URLs, and it's oh, Peggy. I tend to have moderators helping you out during a webinar is is actually brilliant. Um, keep in mind these URL shorteners like this, or tiny URL, whichever one you like to use, Bitly, um, they are case sensitive. So if you need to cap do a capital B or a capital H. And uh, here's the QR code if you're into QR codes, which I think are brilliant tools for classrooms, but we're not going to go into them now. Um, if you want to know how to make a QR code like this, I've done a screencast modeling what I'm preaching. And this, oh, 
Can you just check? Can you see my pointer on the screen? Just do a Y or an N. Can you see my pointer? Oh, thank goodness for that. Okay, because if you just said lots of no's, I'd have gone, well, that brings us to the end of this presentation. No, let's move on. So, if you come to this presentation live in any browser, it works in any browser, um, and it's a Creative Commons, so you can use it. Um, if you come to here, and you go to, uh, to here, it will play. Whoops, I'm going to go past it quickly now. I bet your screen went fuzzy for a second there. Just give it, uh, you know, a couple of seconds for it to settle down. So don't have a heart attack. Also, don't go off and make a cup of coffee either. Right, screen ca No. Oh, you're playing with it on... <laughs> I th Teach tech back. Oh, I don't want it to play that. Okay, so that's uh, here's a, a demonstration. Here's a wait, let me take my headset off because I can hear something. Um, a screencast is a digital recording. You can read it yourself. This is from Wikipedia, not to be mixed up with uh, screenshots. And basically, all it's doing is recording what is on your screen, anything that's on your computer screen, whether it's an Apple, a Mac, or a Linux, whatever it is. See, my video started. Let me just go back because I need to shut that. Oh, it shut itself off. Brilliant. Oh, it hasn't. One second here. I just have to close this. Okay. I'll be with you in a second. Okay. So, let's get going. I'm going to look at the tools first. Now, what would be brilliant, and which I hope you do, is at least 50% of you here have used th these tools. Uh, and what I'm doing is sharing my own personal experiences. Um, but it is a learning experience for me. Just, and and I, like, I love the way Peggy emphasized the fact that she may be a facilitate, one of the facilitators for the Moodle Meet. But every facilitator in the world now, and, and don't believe them if they say otherwise, we're all learners. And that's, that's actually how it's worked in uh, classrooms, of course, isn't it? That's one of the, the skills of 21st century learners is, uh, and 21st century teachers, is teachers are now just another learner in the room. We have a bit more experience and a bit older, but uh, we have more experience. So please, please put into the, into the chat any experiences you have. I have, I have favorites. But you may have your own favorites. Now, my first screencasting tool that I ever used, in, in fact, they've been around for zillions of years. And, and I didn't use them at the beginning because they were so intensive on my, you know, so demanding of my computer that the computer would crash and drop and things. But now that's all changed. It's now easy to do. So the first one that really brought screencasting to, to me uh, and made it easy to do was one called Screener. So if you're a Screener fanboy or fangirl, shout it out in chat. Uh, and don't be shy. If you are a Screener fan, then put the URL of where your screen casts are that you've done with Screener. Um, now, the, the thing for me that made it easy to get into it, and this is this, what the Screener website looks like, is you actually some people some I know some teachers found it awkward because you have to sign in and that's a that's a downside you have to sign in with Twitter or Facebook or Google Plus or Yahoo uh, so that that's a bit of a challenge if you're asking kids to sign in with through that way and if you know any solutions to that th throw throw them in chat my solution is actually will, will be to use my second choice but when you go to screener when you go to Screener, it's as simple as this. You can see there's a button here which says Record. It's also down here as well. <laughs> I wonder what their designers thought when they put the same button in two places. Um, so you just click on that. And when you click on that, what will happen is that this screen here, this square, will actually appear on your desktop. 
So you're just using a browser, remember, and it says Apple, Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever, and this will appear. And what you do is, all you do is you grab the corners and you cover the part of the screen where you want to do a recording. So if the part of the screen was a web site that you're going to give a tour through, or you're going to give a tour of your blog, your librarian, and you want to give this, you want to make a screencast of a tour through your library blog, um, um, then you move these little squares, handles, yeah, that's a better name, handles, to cover the thing that you want. And then all you do is now <laughs> these these arrows. I put them in so I can use them a bit more easily. Um, this is if you click on the red button, it will count down three, two, one, and it will start recording. If your microphone is working, when it's working, this little arrow, these little bars will be moving up and down. And um, this arrow here, this one here, is a, enables you to check your microphone. So before you start, you click on that and just do a quick check of your microphone. This is telling you the size that you've picked. There's a drop-down menu here where you can choose pick sizes for cinema or PowerPoint size, four to three size, and cancel. When you press, now I'm not going to demonstrate it, when you press the red button, um, it will change to a pause button so that while you're recording, you can actually, if you want to catch your breath or, or go off for a for a sandwich, um, you can click the pause button there. Um, now, the limitations with the uh, screener, oh, there's a video there, I don't want to play that, but if you come here yourself, you can play the video that's up here, the video tutorial, and it's browser-based as it says here. And there's a limitation of five minutes, it's free, there's a limitation of five minutes. Now, I actually think that's quite good, because if you're setting a a project for students. Uh, it, started, it started it. Let me just stop it. Okay, just stop that. Um, if you're working with students, my advice is the fact that it's less than five minutes is a plus. And if, and from my experience, when I've been, I work more with teachers than I do with students. But if I'm asking uh, people in a workshop to make participants in a workshop to make a screencast. Keeping it down to two or three minutes is is good. It makes often makes the students focus more on content and how can you squeeze it into that three minutes. Now, please don't write in chat that you've seen some of my videos and they've been 30 minutes. Uh, I try and practice what I preach. It doesn't always it doesn't always happen. But the nice thing with Screener is it forces it on you. It forces the five minute limit on you. I, I'll talk about saving your screencast in a minute. Um, my my favorite though, my favorite though is um, Screencast-O-Matic. Um, it's like Screener's big brother or big sister. Um, you can do longer screencasts, uh, up to 15 minutes. And in fact, I think if you're, you, you pay $12 a year, I think you can get 60 minute screencasts. If you know, put it into chat. Um, but it has more functionality. That's what their website looks like. Screencast Omatic. You go here, you can actually create an account which gets rid of that having to rely on Twitter or Facebook login. You can actually create an account. Actually, I'm hesitating because I don't know how to comment on that. Whether to create an account for your class or to ask the students to create account, an account. I'm not sure what the best way forward on that is, so if you've done it, throw your experiences into chat. So you come to here, you sign up. I think you can actually do it if you don't sign up even. You can do it anonymously, but it won't save it into Screencast-O-Matic if you do it anonymously. And you click on Start Recording. And it's the same principle as Screener. It brings up on your screen these dotted lines, and you can cover the area of the screen that you're recording. It's got more buttons along the bottom here. This is the start button. It'll go three, two, one, start. Laurie, I think the limit on the free version, I think it's, it might, I think it's 15 minutes. It might even be 60 minutes, but you can only save on their website 15 minutes. But you can upload it to YouTube anyway. Um, so this is the start button, number one. 
this is your microphone level, so you can see whether it's talk, whether your microphone is, is loud enough. Um, this number four is a check on your microphone. You know, sometimes you have a problem with your microphone. Have you ever had it? You have a problem with your microphone, and you have to go to the Windows control panel. And you go, oh, no, here we go again. Um, they've sorted this out because this little symbol here, if you click on that, it goes to the relevant place in Windows for you. This is the size of the window, if you, but you can make it any size you want. Six is something that isn't in screener. If you click on six, it bring it powers up your webcam so you can have a little image of you, a little headshot of you in the in the screencast as well. It'd just be on the screen in, inside this square. So that's what that is. Easy to switch on. Uh, and the cross is I've forgotten. I'm, I assume it just means close it all. And there are some advanced options, but these, these are the main ones. Okay, let's move on to others. The Rolls-Royce Camtasia Studio. This is a desktop program. You download it. It costs money. Next one. ScreenFlow. If you're a Mac user. Oh, we didn't do that survey. Put an M if you're a Mac user or a W if you're a Windows user in chat. M for Mac or W for Windows. That's like slightly heavy on the Windows side. Actually, we're really fortunate. If, if if we were doing this ten years ago, you had to sort of sign your life over to Mac or Windows, didn't we? We had to, you know, you had to commit to one or the other. Now the two are so similar and both user friendly. It's so easy to be computer ambidextrous. So ScreenFlow is a good, is a good one. I'm, you know, asking the Mac uh, colleagues I have and friends I have, but it's expensive. There is an educational discount. Jing, I actually love Jing. Jing is not web-based, it's a download. And I noticed in chat, Jing was being mentioned earlier. <laughs> I have to ask you when, you, when you, when you install Jing, and it's an easy in installation, you see this yellow thing here. Does anybody else think it looks like a cow's udder? Because it hangs from the top of the screen. So, so, <laughs> so, so, when you have it installed, it hangs down from the top of your screen. Actually, it's a great, great program. I like it. I'm a big fan of that. And of course, you're not reliant on an internet connection if you've got this on the machine. So if you're in a school and your connectivity is a bit iffy, um, this is a, is a good solution. And it's free, and they have a pro option. And I actually can't remember the difference between the free and the pro. $15 a year. Uh, it's not a big deal. And there's some others here. There's another one here for uh, uh, Linux people, and uh, I'm not going to go through those in detail. I see up here I put some circles. These are some other web-based ones like Screener and Screencast-O-Matic. These are some others you can download. Uh, I've noticed some I haven't mentioned or have meant been mentioned in here. I've actually put an AMP Cam Studio here. Well worth looking at. If you work in the kids, of course, you don't have to pick one. You can say to, say to your students, look, choose one of these. Let them choose, and then make that part evaluation part of the lesson as well. Uh, you know, don't spend your Sunday going off evaluating all of these. Ask your students to do it on Monday. Here's a special circle I've got where I'm... Actually, I like Prezi because they're live programs. I throw things in here as I go along. You know, Tomorrow I'll find something out about screencasting, and I'll throw it on my Prezi. Um, this is one where I just put special ones, and this is a really, really fun screencasting application here called Bounce. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. <laughs> okay. Oh, is that right, Laurie? The file format, format is huge with Jing. Oh, thanks for sharing that. I've never noticed that before. And free and... Okay. Isn't it great? There are 70 people in the room. Look at all this expertise we're getting coming in chat. I love it. Hosting them. What do we do with them when we host them, uh, when we've made them? Well, Screener and Screencast-O-Matic have hosting facilities already. Now, I have a Prezi presentation, which is all about sharing digital media. And this is it. And if you want to look at how to share digital media, because that's what you're doing when you're sharing a Prezi, then uh, it could be the same as sharing a PowerPoint or sharing an audio file. 
if you went and had a look at this particular prezi, it's live online, um, you can uh, get information. So there's the, <laughs> come on, own up. Those people that are sitting there with a pen and a bit of paper and you're writing things down. You are, aren't you? Well, I do as well. So, <laughs> so, so, right. <laughs> so, um, if you write that URL down, remember it's case sensitive. These uh, shortened URLs, um, then uh, you 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 can find out all these different what, that particular presentation. So we've got screencast, screener and screencast-o-matic. You can save on their site, or you can press the button which says upload to YouTube. And I think they both have a button which says download to your computer. The more you can do, well, this is for me anyway, the more I can do to safeguard myself when I'm doing a presentation with teachers and I'm not as reliable on the internet, you know, I download everything on my hard drive just in case. You know, I put that one there with a question mark. I can't remember why I put it there. <laughs> Screencast is a website that's set up for hosting uh, screencast. Actually, you could go there and look for screencasts about whatever you're teaching with the kids. If you're doing a project on Monday on volcanoes, go and see if anybody's done screencasts about, about volcanoes already. YouTube, of course, TeacherTube, SchoolTube, Vimeo, these are names I know a lot of you, a lot of, a lot of us in the room know already. If you don't know YouTube, hmm, okay. If you don't know YouTube, don't buy any lottery tickets. I, uh, and I couldn't resist actually doing a screencast this week on how to edit in YouTube. Oh, I didn't mention that. Screencast-O-Matic, a function it has, and I missed it in chat if it was mentioned, sorry. Screencast-O-Matic has an editing function in it. Screener doesn't. So that's the reason for using Screencast-O-Matic. But my philosophy, as Peggy and Kim and Lorna, they know, is... I don't edit. If I make a little mistake, well, so what? It's real life. Let's move on. God forbid we spend all of Sunday editing it just to get it right. Uh, better to spend the time with your family and the kids or go water skiing. Um, but if you want to see how you can edit in YouTube, have a look at the screencast here that I made. And I also have another Prezi, which you know I'm invited to schools and conferences. I was in Hong Kong last month. And one of the presentations I did for EAL, ESL teachers, was video in teaching and learning. And these are my visuals from that. And you can access those at this uh, address. Guys, how is the speed of the Prezi working for you? Is it staying fuzzy or is it coming up okay? Just you, just... Uh, brilliant. Brilliant, says he with a sigh of relief. Oh, that's brilliant. Let's move on. Um, and we've got Jing here. Um, because, now, it's because you're using your, your desktop to record, it doesn't rely on the internet. It saves on, the, on, the, uh, on your hard drive. I didn't appreciate that thing about being big files. But remember, if you have a big... Why did I say remember? If you have a big file any big video file, throw it on YouTube because then YouTube optimizes it for all sorts of devices. If you look at YouTube on an on a iPad, YouTube will throw the version that's optimized for the iPad. If you look at it on a fast machine, it will throw you the version of, of what will work best on your, on your Windows machine or your Apple machine. So you don't necessarily have to buy special software, actually some great free software for optimizing videos. If you like me, I throw it on YouTube, and then actually, if I want a, a lower resolution version, I actually download it from YouTube. Who's going to be the first to type into chat the favorite website to go to to download YouTube? I'm hesitating. Hey, Laura, you won the prize. It's a free economy class ticket from New York to Bangkok. And just come to the house any time tomorrow to collect it. <laughs> okay, let's move on to, to a few other things. Recording a Mac screen, you can do that for free. There's built-in software uh, in Mac OS X. 
So let me move on. These are going to be quite, very quick. Microphones are important. I'm using this microphone here, which is a Samsung microphone. It's a USB microphone. I'm using a separate headset. And if you're a podcaster or a recorder, I really like that. But to stand on the other side of the ring, and the other side of the, and the other corner, in many many respects, quick and nasty screencast, just your built-in uh, microphone in your iPad, your built-in microphone in your laptop is, is good. When I'm running workshops, I, br I usually bring a microphone on a ten on a five meter lead, which costs me about four US dollars. And it's it's good, but if you want to get a bit more professional, um, and, and I know Kim and Peggy always say it's good to have a USB headset, which it is. But these microphones, I love them. There's two different ones here, by the way. One is just for one person, and the other one, which is a bit bigger, the UK prices. But I bought mine on Amazon. Yeah, buy it on Amazon. Amazon's so cheap. You know, I'm a, I, I sometimes think I'm a slow learner. I only discovered Amazon about two years ago, and I saved a fortune. Um, also, what I found interesting, not related to this, is Amazon UK and Amazon US have different prices. But this microphone, you can have one person sat one side and one person sitting the other side, and it works on, on that. A quick reminder, there is a portable version of Cam Studio, and you can put it on a thumb drive, and you can plug it in to a, a, a laptop, and it will work. You just click on it and it works and it records your laptop. There's no installation involved. I always carry this with me when I'm a version of this, when I'm at workshops. Because if somebody brings a laptop and the internet's not very good, they can't download, download something, you plug that in and you can work straight off the bat. Of course, if you're an interactive whiteboard person, and scream if you're an interactive whiteboard uh, um, uh, fam, fanboy or girl, and Smart, Promethea, Smart, Promethea, Smart US, Canada. No, Smart's Canadian, isn't it? Uh, Promethea, UK company. Um, they all have recording software built in. And if you go to this presentation of mine, on this page I added yesterday a video from Smart about it. I've forgotten the name. It has a special name, the Smart Board Screencasting Software. It's great. Interactive whiteboard, boys and girls. Great. Throw it in there. A, a quick one, this, backgrounds. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to zoom this up, because you, know, you can come to this Prezi on your own time at your own convenience. But I have a whole list of interactive whiteboards that will play in a browser. Because if you're going to do a, a, a screencast, what are you going to do it on? And my favorite is this one called Scribbler. It's free, and if you bring Scribbler up, on your computer, you can do all sorts of things. You can do maths, you can do typing, you can draw diagrams, you can bring in pictures, you can move pictures. So it's something to actually work on, a platform to work on, to do your screencast. Now the really you know, differentiation, right? We always want to push the gifted. So for the gifted ones of you in the room, and just make a note in chat if you're one of the gifted teachers. <laughs> <laughs> the gifted teachers in the room. If you want to annotate over your screencast, now I'm not going to do it now. Actually, there's a reason for me not doing it now, is that sometimes the annotation software interferes with the webinar software, so I'm not going to do it. But for instance, if I wanted to be able to draw a pointer on a circle around here, or do an arrow, or type something, or make, uh, highlight something yellow, then there's a free thing called Zoomit, which is actually made by an ex-Microsoft employer. It's a nice thing to download. It's free. There's another one called Pointer, which sits at the top of your screen, and you can do all sorts of things over what you're recording. And there's a web, there's a blog here which actually uh, reviews them. Now, let me talk about this. This will blow your mind. <laughs> For years, I've been. Well, it's only been around two years. Since the iPad came out, to do a screencast of a demonstration on the iPad was not possible. And you can see the sort of setup I had. I had to get a webcam and put the webcam over the top of the iPad facing down. And the webcam is connected to the uh, new computer. And then you bring up your software, your screener, or your screencast-o-matic, or your Jive, or whatever. 
and you press record and then you do what you want here and it's awful you have to make up this you get reflections on the glass the uh, it's it's that is it's so it's so frustrating about three four weeks ago a piece of software was released called reflection or reflection app now if you anybody knows this in the in the room if any of the 76 of you of us know this in the room I'm really I'm really impressed uh, it's it's a piece of software called reflectionapp.com it costs you 15 US dollars to download it only works at the moment on the Mac and an Apple operating system um, you can get a license for fifty dollars and what you do is you download the software onto your Mac on your Apple iPad you don't have to install anything no app it's just amazing when you do it it blows your mind so all you have to do all you have to do though is oops let me go back I want to highlight this for those of you with iPads where the volume control is on your iPad at the bottom on the screen this little button comes up and it allows you to share it wirelessly over the network your MacBook and your iPad have to be on the same Wi-Fi what you'll find is that it suddenly comes up with the name of your computer and you click mirroring on and lo and behold Okay, Shambles, so some of us are saying we're frozen. Are you still with us? For listening to me? No, your microphone's gone too. We have a bit of uh, lag in the session. You see uh, right beside Shambles' uh, name, his microphone is doing a few things, and he's trying to come back. He's out sharing again, so I managed to do a little bit of filling in in dead space. But we lost shambles. We have lost shambles. So, he'll be back. Yes, that reflection app is, well, everybody here says it's awesome. It's one of my favorite things, and I'll sit here and talk about ScreenFlow all I can because I have the mic. And did they want to, want, to come to, want to come to the mic while we're reading it? Yes, I believe it does work on the iPhone as well, but I, I haven't got an iPhone. I just have the I, iPad. He's still here. With this? I don't see him in the room. Lorna, have you used the reflection app? I did. And he, was, he said, blow your mind away. Oh my gosh, it's right there on the screen and you can get rid of the um, outline of the iPad as well and just concentrate on what it is that you're sharing uh, on the iPad. Hey, I'm oh, back. Welcome back. back. Good. Okay. I Go ahead. I did nothing. It came back on itself. How how brilliant is that with with Blackboard Collaborate? It is. And I did hear you talking about me, so it's a good job you're saying good things. Um, right. Let's. Where were we? Let me share my app again. Application sharing. My Adobe Flash Player. Come on, internet. I wasn't saying bad things about you, really. Still trying to share. Well, it's doing that. Let me make. <laughs> it's still trying to share. That's always interesting. Then is my my live audience were the ones that told me that you couldn't hear me anymore. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop my sharing and try again. Let me try again. Share. Share. Here we go. Well done. Right. Is everybody back? You can see my uh, my prezi. Yes. No. <laughs> Welcome to the world of web webinars. 
And we've only got about 10 minutes left, so I'm going to speed up here. Um, of course, I, I mentioned this particular app for screencasting purposes, but just for presentation in the classroom. So you could have your MacBook Pro plugged into your projector, and your iPad is connecting to it wirelessly. You have to be on the same network, so you can walk around the room. If students in your class have got iPads, you could just tell them, send it to your MacBook connected to the projector. You can actually password protect it to stop abuse there. So let's, uh, let's move on here. Uh, and there, is a, there is a video you can look at about it there, so we won't look at that. Let's look at some examples. Um, Russell Stannard is, uh, has been around for a few years. He's a, a screencasting guru. There's lots of presentations about continuing for continuing professional development for teachers. Uh, I think he has a screencast about screencasting um, demo. Um, a real, look at Peggy, isn't she well organized? She's ahead of me. I have no problems if I got cut off. She'd do it for me. <laughs> um, but Russell Stannard, a good one to look at. Khan Academy. Uh, I've uh, got a, this video in the Prezi will play live. He did a TED talk. Now, something that's new in the last two weeks is the Khan Academy has come out with a free iPad app where you can access nearly 3,000 of, the, of the, his videos. There's a heavy maths element, but lots of other things as well. Um, and the nice thing with the iPad app is that you have the option of actually downloading a particular video and putting it on your iPad. So if you have no internet con connectivity, you know, if you really wanted to push the kids, you could say, right, you're in class and, we, and there's this video I want you to download into your iPad uh, um, to look at, uh, even if you've got no connectivity. And your task is, you look at it while you're on the bus on the way home. There's a lot of dead time on buses on the, traveling to and from homes. You can use it in that way. And there's, a, there's actually some videos here as well about, uh, about it, but it's free. It was uh, made available just recently. I'm envious of maths teachers because it's maths, right? You do realize it's not called math. It's called maths, really. Two countries separated by a common language. Maths casting, the maths teachers have done it themselves. Math, <laughs> math you can get CC just looking at a Prezi, actually, if I went fast. Um, maths casting uh, is something that mathematicians have really embraced. And Tim, Tim Falberg is there. Uh, and Tim has been really good because I've actually Skyped him into my, uh, some of my workshops. I Skyped him into a workshop in Singapore once and he talked about it. Last week's Classroom 2.0 session, the Flip Classroom, um, they mentioned this guy where there's lots of examples of his students' work, which I quite like. And there's other links here. You can look at them on your own. Lots of resources. There's uh, on Shambles are some resources. Um, down the bottom here, there's a live binder, which is purely focused, which has a section purely on screencasting. Peggy briefly mentioned uh, her Scoop It, which is, actually, I love this. I've become a big Scoop It fan. More than my binders, I think, for archiving uh, uh, things on, on, on the web. Curating is it. That's it. You want to sound knowledgeable, say you're curating everything. Curating. Uh, stuff. Now, I would have asked Peggy to talk about it, but I'm going to move on because I know she's watching the clock as well. If you're in the Moodle Meet, an advert for that, which is still going on, um, and I'm sure Peggy will put Moodle Meet stuff in here, uh, then I notice she mentions uh, her, uh, her uh, screencasting Scoop It site. Do you get overwhelmed? You get thrown new websites at you all the time. This is a part of uh, my uh, Prezi where I'm going to collect more education examples. Uh, I've got one here on how to screencast with Google Earth. If you've got any new ones, I'd love you to throw them at me because I need some new ones to go in here. OK, quickly, mobile devices, the iPad and the iPhone. This blog has some, uh, some great uh, comparisons and reviews, and here, what I've done here is I've put probably the most popular ones. Now I'm gonna, if your screen gets all fuzzy, don't worry. 
because you can look at it in your own time. So there's some comparisons here, screencasting apps, although I've got more now in here. Edu creation is my favorite one. So you can do things on there and, and record it. It's free. I wrote, actually wrote to these guys They're in the States. I wrote to them. I said, I can't believe it's free. And they said, well, it is. And uh, we will have a, 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 an enhanced version later. Show me is free. This is well used, I know. Who said the iPad was a consumption device and not a creation device? What a load of rubbish that is. Maybe two years ago, but no more. Here's some others. Don't you love that avatar, that picture? Great picture. You're always tempted to use that because it's called Screen Chomp and it looks like that. These are these are all apps you can download. Half of them are free. Two ninety nine. There are educational discounts. It's easy to miss the educational discounts. This one I've thrown in because it's not a pure screencast. If you've got a PE teacher, a sports teacher, a sports coach, and they've got an iPad, show them this. It's brilliant. You can video a student dunking basketballs, and then you can replay it and, and uh, annotate over the top of what the student's doing on the iPad screen and leave instructions, or do a play for, for a, American football. Um, your PE teachers will love that app. Go in on Monday and tell them about that. Oh, I have a section on screencasting. I have a book called An Educator's iPad. I published recently on a month ago on uh, Amazon, and there's a section in there on, uh, <laughs> this is the advert, right? And and have a section there on screencasting. But wait for it to come out on the, uh, in iTunes. It looks much better on the, on the Apple than it does on, uh, on the Kindle. Let's move on. I'm not going to do that help. I always like to throw help buttons in and stop, but we're running out of time. We're almost there. The flip classroom. No need for me to say anything, because here, uh, classroom 2.0 over the years is collecting an amazing archive. Here is just a link to last week's archive. I have, and I don't want to go into a rant, I don't want to get my soapbox out, I have a little bit of a I can debate the other corner with Flip Classroom. I like I like how Flip Classroom started off by simply saying, how can we better use the time in the classroom? And that's a wonderful place to start. But to almost ignore everything that we've been doing in the past years, I feel a bit sad. I actually think that if you've got whole class teaching with a teacher, there's still a place for that. And it's magical when you've got a, 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 a skilled, knowledgeable teacher working with a whole class. They are magical moments. So if you're doing the flip classroom, please don't throw those away. Do a blended approach. You don't have to. You don't have to throw the old away, because it's old. Says he, thinking at looking at the timeline at the beginning of this screencast. Because it's old, it doesn't mean it's not. Uh, it's not good anymore. Um, and to, one of the best places to find out about the, for me, about what's happening in the flip classroom is uh, look at people's blogs, and I, I've got some there. And there's some videos, and we're not going to go through the videos. So your, your screen's all fuzzy now. Although they have a, a Ning, the Flip Classroom Network, and if you're really looking at it, follow that. But actually, don't throw the old away. You know, you're great teachers. The fact that you're here now, the fact that there are 72 of you here now, you are pioneers. You are pioneers. No, you know, no doubt about that. Okay, and we're almost at the end. I'm going to end on, I went a bit quick then, so you, I hope you didn't get sick. I want to finish on this. You know, great question, is flipped classroom used more in middle or high schools? I don't know the answer to that. Good question. Okay, I have a health warning here Yeah, about about screencasting and a bit about the flipped classroom. Because the flipped classroom encourages you to make videos. You could make them with a, another person so that the kids can watch videos of presentations at home. And there's a danger with screencasting is you, you learn a new this new skill of screencasting. And the danger is, I think it's a danger, is that you go home and you go, right, I'm going to spend Sunday and Saturday making screencasts. Please don't. Well, you might say, I'm going to spend all of Sunday learning how to use four different platforms so I can decide which is the best one to use with my students. Please don't. 
and, and I know you know this already, the, the, the age demographics, I know you know this already, is the richest learning experience is going to be if the kids are going to do the screencast. So please, please don't go and do the screencasts for the kids because the kids doing the screencasts themselves, that will be a much richer learning experience. Okay, there may be some little ums and ahs and a bit and you know, if they are, roll with it. And, and don't have to ask the kids to spend hours editing it. We want to focus on the content of what the screencasting is making more accessible. The screencast is not important. The content is important. How Volcano works is important. Um, don't, don't get the, have the students do it. Actually, I've missed something out of this presentation. I've missed storyboarding out. When I, uh, when I do a screencast, I must admit, I storyboard it in my head, and I just go, and I suck it and see, and if it gets a real mess, I stop it and do it again. I don't edit. I rarely, rarely edit. Um, but if I was going to, and I'll do this with this uh, Prezi, it needs a section on storyboarding. Now, there are apps to do this on the iPad, and there is software to do this. I'm old school, ladies and gentlemen. You know, one sheet of A3 paper, and you've got a group of the four students storyboard it on a sheet of paper. Uh, some of you have done this already because I know, I recognize the names, there's quite a number in here now who are, who are digital storytelling gurus, expert, experts. So it's the same thing with digital storytelling because that's what we're doing with screencasting is digital storytelling. But please, my health warning is don't spend your life doing screencasts and giving them to the kids to watch. Have the students do the screencasts themselves. It's a much, much richer learning experience. And I think on that note, this is a Creative Commons. Just to remind you, it's Creative Commons. This symbol means you can copy it. This symbol means you can change it. But good luck with that because it's a present. You mustn't sell it for money, but if you do, I want a percentage. And there's accreditation. Uh, not accreditation. Accreditation. I've forgotten the word. It's not accreditation. It's attribution. 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 And I think, ladies and gentlemen, Peggy, how's the timing? I'm going to stop. Great. Thank you so much. I know we're going to take some questions in just a bit. I'm going to go ahead and officially close out the show, um, but we'll go back to a shambles and then we'll take questions because I know people are going to have some and uh, then we'll continue things on. And we'll get to you in just a second, Mark. Okay, here we go. We want to let you know that on March the 20th, Steve Hargadon is going to be interviewing Kathy Davidson, and on March the 22nd, David Warlick, and on 20 on the 27th, at Alec Cur he'll be interviewing Alec Kuros, and on the 29th, Dick Gill, and all of those will be at 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern and 1 a.m. general, I think it's, I forgot what GMT time stands for. But anyway, Steve will be interviewing those uh, people at those times, and we hope that you will join him for those interviews. We will have um, the continuation of the Moodle Meet from the 16th through the 22nd with Peggy George and Lorna Constantini and Shambles Guru continuing. So we hope that you will join that. And the link to join the Moodle Meet is in the Live Finder, and we'll put that in the chat as well so that you can join the Moodle Meet. 
and participate in the discussion and learn more about different waste and resources for screencasting and planning your screencasting. I've been participating. It's a really great, great Moodle course. It's very easy to manipulate and go through. We will, on March the 24th, have our featured teacher of the month, Linda Yallis, I believe is how you pronounce it, another fantastic teacher. And March the 31st, Latia Cooper, she's going to be sharing STEM resources in the Live Binder, and they'll be showing the new Live Binder setup. So that's going to be another fantastic session. If you haven't seen her resources, you will be just amazed, absolutely amazed. So be uh, sure to join for that session. And then on April 7th, that's going to be Easter weekend, so we will not have a show for that weekend. And we wanted to let you know that the Knowledge Sharing Place with Dean and the Live Binders people, they will be having a session this Wednesday, March the 28th, at 4.30 Pacific and 7.30 Eastern. They're going to be talking with Mike Fisher and Toby Price about Leverage the Web for Common Core, talking about the Common Core standards and uh, information surrounding that and the classroom and information. So be sure to join that in, this, in the same room. You don't need a different link. It's the same link. So you're going to want to mark your calendar in the same room. So that's going to be another fantastic session. They always have great people. And if you'd like to nominate a featured teacher, any educator that's working with students and, and colleagues, um, you please, please fill out the form, tinyurl.com slash CR20Live, featured teacher, N-O-M-I-N-A-T. And we would love to feature them in one of our sessions. And all they have to do is just be a teacher working with educators or students. So uh, take a few moments to uh, copy the URL and or when you view the archive, make sure you take note of that. And please nominate an educator that we can feature the work that they're doing with students or their colleagues. Once you, once you uh, leave the session, a uh, survey will open up in your browser, and we would love to get feedback on today's session. You can also, in that session, nominate or a future teacher as well as topics that you would like to see in future sessions. You can also request a professional development certificate. And if for some reason you can email us at live at classroom20.com, the email is at the bottom of that slide. And Peggy will get out the certificate to us. Give us a bit of time with the Moodle Meet and stuff going on um, uh, to get the certificates made and emailed to you, and we'll get those out to you. And anytime you watch a recording of one of the archives, just email us and give us a bit of time, and we'll get that certificate out to you as well. You can also subscribe to the iTunes U channel. We have a video collection and an audio collection of the MP3s and MP4s. You can subscribe to either one or both. All are free. You can go to tinyurl.com slash cr20live, iTunes U, all one word. That will open up the iTunes U channel directly into iTunes U for you, so you don't have to go searching and hunting for the channel and it opens it up directly for you. You just subscribe. You um, That will subscribe for all of them. But if you want to subscribe or 
select individual ones, you have to do that manually. You can also subscribe to the blog post that we post on our website. Um, and our website is live.classroom20.com. You'll just click on the archives and resources page, and then you can subscribe to the RSS feed and subscribe to the blog posts each week. And then you'll receive the MP3, the MP4, and all of the resources that we post in the blog post every week along with the live binder inf information. So there are several ways to get all of the resources and to take us with you wherever you go each week. And we want to extend a very special thank you to Chris Smith, Shambles Guru, and to Steve Hargadon, who is the founder of Classroom20.com. We will also uh, be hosting a virtual conference with the DEN, the Discovery Educators Network, called the Social Learning Network Conference the Social Learning Conference, and that's going to be on De December, <laughs> April the 21st. And I'll post the link in the, the web uh, tour in just one second. And we want to extend a special thank you to Weebly for hosting our website as well as to... Um, Blackboard for providing this forum for us to meet each and every week. And we want to also thank each of you for sharing with us your resources and your time. And I'm hoping that I have the right email address or website address. We are combining with the uh, the DEN for the Social Social Learning Summit. That's going to be April the 21st. Anybody can present in 30-minute sessions, and they're taking proposals until April 7th. And the web address is sociallearningsummit.com, and you can submit proposals. So if you want to uh, take the, let me post the address into the chat. That's the web address, and we encourage you to do so. It's only 30 minutes. Um, and we, we hope that you'll do that and participate. We won't have a session that day so that everybody can participate in the virtual conference um, in conjunction with the, the DEN network. And that will be a great time for everybody to, to, to learn together and to join together with the DEN and, and join forces in a free event with a focus on the virtual participation in another virtual conference. And I think that's going to be just a, a fantastic event. So let's go ahead and go back to Shambles. I know people have questions. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask, please put your question in the chat. Or if you'd like to take the mic, please click on the hand, and we'll give you the mic. And you can ask your question of Shambles using your mic. And I'll also, uh, we can put Shambles information in the chat in case you think of your information later. And let me give you the mic, Reba. Reba, you have the mic. Go ahead. Good morning. I hope I'm not too loud. Is it okay? Can you hear me? Yes, we sure can. All right. Uh, good morning, Shambles. It was a great webinar. I got in late. But I've been using... Um, Green Chopper on the iPad to have the kids make their own video tutorials, but the problem that I'm having is finding a place to host them, like all together. So, do you have a suggestion for that? 
good, 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 good question. It's it, one of one of the problems with the iPad is that it's actually not a multitasking machine. So the screencasts are fairly limited straight away because you can normally just write or put a still picture. You can't actually. It's very difficult to have something running there and screencast over something running. But what many, and I don't know with the particular one you, you mentioned, but what many of the apps allow you to do is upload to YouTube. Uh, so if you can do that, you upload to YouTube. Or, and, and some of you I know are going, to, uh, are going to nod your head at this, for me, one of the main ways of getting any digital media out of the iPad and onto any other device like a, like a, a laptop or even in the cloud is Dropbox, dropbox.com, which is free for two gigabytes. Uh, and many of the apps in the iPad now, but again, I don't know the specifics of, of the one you just mentioned, um, have an option which says save to Dropbox. And if it doesn't, write to the guys who make that particular app because the if they're anything, they're really responsive. These people uh, quite often it's just a couple of couple of people in the garage somewhere. They're quite responsive, and you may well find that your suggestion to I'd like to be able to save my screencast to uh, uh, to Dropbox, and then it will become available on any of your machines, and then you can upload it to YouTube or or SchoolTube uh, or TeacherTube. Um, do that. Don't be afraid. I think with any apps on the iPad, I've, it's something I've learned over the past couple of years is they are usually very responsive, especially if you make, tell them you're an educator, because bless their cotton socks, many of these app developers appreciate the value of teaching and learning and the value of education. Um, I guess they're really supporting a future audience of people who have credit cards, but. Uh, Whatever the reason is, they are they are responsive. So I, I think that's all I can help you on that one. Um, we can't use YouTube, but I was thinking if you could put it in a website where the students can go to the site and click on math tutorials or reading tutorials or storytelling. That's the kind of thing I was looking at because I work with kindergarten through fifth graders using the app. So I don't know if you have a, like the Khan Academy has one place you can go to and access, but I guess the Weebly website or something, or Google sites or something. Mm. Well, I think I think with the Khan Academy now, if you've got if you're using iPads, then the thing to do is to download their their new app. But also keep in mind that everything on YouTube can be embedded. Uh, <laughs> and I, must, um, I have I have something like sixty sixty blogs. I have many of them are theme blogs about say earthquakes. And what I do is I embed. YouTube videos in into those. Actually, you what you can't use YouTube though. Yeah. It needs alternatives. But sometimes, but sometimes, but sometimes uh, um, embedding it gets you through that you that YouTube uh, that you YouTube problem. Teacher Tube okay. could could work as well. Maybe that's not blocked. Okay. You t you, can I add one more thing? Sure. I'm in. I live in Southeast Asia, and blocking is one of the favorite topics because in Southeast Asia it's not just schools that block it's whole countries that block um, you stream is completely blocked in 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 Thailand be, for streaming because somebody didn't want the ex prime minister to transmit to the government um, the great wall of china the great firewall of china blocks and one of the tools in a digital teacher Southeast Asia's digital toolbox is VPN. How to set up a VPN so it makes it look like your computer is actually in San Francisco or is in London rather than being in China. Um, and so I'm just mentioning it so you can sort of do a, you can Google it, Google VPN. Uh, and that's another way of getting Although, of course, in the school you don't want to do that because the boss is going to have a go at you. But uh, VPN is a way of getting around some of the filters. Actually, that's a whole issue. We could spend an hour talking about VPN. Well, thank you very much. Oftentimes, wiki spaces are not blocked. Okay, I'll use that too. Yeah, you can check that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm.
do we have any other questions that um, people would like to ask? You could get a server and host them locally as well and host them on a school network. If you'd like to take the mic, just uh, click on the, the hand or at the top just below your name, or you can post them in the chat. Can I, can I mention one? Peggy, you just mentioned reflection is similar to splash top. They're similar that they transmit between machines, but it's the different way. Reflection transmits from an iPad to your laptop. Splash top is transmitting from your laptop to your iPad. So in fact, actually, it makes your iPad look like it can play Flash because it's doing that. So they both transmit over Wi-Fi, yes, but they actually they do it in different directions. That's what makes reflection so unique. It's suddenly come out of the blue, and it's the first app that's actually transmitting. Unless you have an Apple TV, if you have an Apple TV, which I carry around and to presentations and plug in, an Apple TV allows you to transmit also from your iPad to your big street, big screen TV in your living room or your bedroom. You can have great YouTube parties if you can do that. You're all going to have a whip round now for an iPad for Peggy. Just put ten dollars in the uh, in the floppy drive slot on your machine. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> then Valley asks, do you need to be on the same network and IP address for splash top and reflection? Yeah, it's not the same IP address, it's the same Wi Fi. They actually have different IP addresses, but you're absolutely right, that's quite important. Actually it also brings out a point that some schools switch off something called multicat it's a techie thing this. Put your fingers in your ears if you don't like techie stuff. Um, some schools on their Wi-Fi switch off something called multicasting, and that stops me when I'm in workshops sometimes transmitting from my iPad to an Apple TV that's connected to a, a flat screen TV in the classroom. Um, so you need to contact and you need to contact your technicians to allow your local school network to multitask. If only if. Actually, reflections isn't affected by this, but transmitting from an iPad to an Apple TV, which costs $99, to an Apple TV, and a, which is connected to a big screen TV, you have to have multi-casting multi switched off by your technicians, which they won't do, because they worry the kids will uh, abuse it. <laughs> Lorna. Now, I'm making all this up, you know that. If I use long words and I speak quickly, And what oh, was that question oh, about? Converter box. Can I pick up the converter box? I'm going to guess what that's referring to because it's a problem I've had. If you have an Apple TV, so your iPad can transmit to an Apple TV, but your projector in school just uses a VGA cable because an Apple TV output is HDMI. At home it's great because most big TVs now have an HDMI connection, so you plug in your Apple TV, your $99 Apple TV that's about the size of a cigarette box, uh, you plug that into your Apple TV because it's got HDMI, but your projectors in your classroom probably don't. So yes, you have to buy a little $30 box which goes between your Apple TV and your projector, which changes HDMI. Wow, I sound techy now. I'm sounding really knowledgeable. It sounds, it converts your HDMI to VGA, so it will go into your projector. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Just the word dongle appears in the in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I learned what that was um, a couple of years ago at ISTE. I was like, what in the world is a dongle? <laughs> and how important that is when you're presenting to con to connect that use that to the projector and the and the laptops. And there's a question about what's the name of the program that draws pictures quickly while someone's explaining a topic. 
Oh, the one scribbler. But it's got a funny, funny. Doesn't have a net. It's not an e at heart then. Oh. Scribbler. There's a there's a whole list on shambles. It's in the it's in the. There must be thirty of them. There are lots of them. But my favourite, without any shadow of doubt, is at the top of my list. At least this month, is scribbler. Oh, that's it. Thanks. Thanks, that pe oh, Peggy. You you are. Goodness. Stop it. What are you, what colour pills are you taking, Peggy? I need some of your pills. And I drew I D R O O is is what program? <laughs> I'm missing Oh I drew. I don't know that one. Oh, okay. And Reba, you have the mic? Oh, for Skype, okay. Peggy, did you still want us to share our screencasting experience? Oh, please. Oh, okay. I work with kindergarten through fifth grade, and I'm introducing the iPads to the students and the teachers. And so I use um, Screen Chopper. So with kinders, what I've done is I had them learn how to tell a story, and I'm trying to build on their oral communication because I think the computers, even though I love them, they have taken away the oral communication that students are using now. They're more or less interacting with the computer and not standing in the front of the room talking. And so I have them draw a picture and to tell a story. And I have to give them a story starter, which is the regular one once upon a time, whatever. I, um, when I move up with the first up to fifth grade, I have them um, emulate a math problem, and I have the students in their classroom um, elicit issues that they want to have help with. They don't know how to divide or multiply or double-digit division. I have them produce videos for their classmates. And then as I got up into, I did a lesson with third through sixth with cells using concept development, trying to get them to use vocabulary to focus on what a cell is in the park. And then I had them draw a cell and explain the cell and the, and the parts and anything they wanted to talk about. But that's how I use the screencasting. So the kids are really starting to focus in and looking at the, the text. And I see them being becoming more engaged. But the problem I have is just putting it in one place so they all can um, access it. But that's what I've done with the screencasting with the iPad. That's it. Thank you for sharing, Ruba. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I know that stories, we're in the business, with teachers, we're in the business of storytelling. That's it, you're sitting around the campfire, storytelling. And, uh, and I hope that storytelling without computers doesn't die. God forbid, you know, we, we, telling stories is so powerful. The computers allow us some extra motivation and, 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 and engagement and, and collaborative work if you're actually producing an end product. But storytelling is such an important skill to take with you through your life, isn't it? And Sue, can you click on your hand? I can't find you. Thank you, Sue. Okay. Gotcha. Go ahead. You have the mic. I just wanted to mention that uh, little meets go on <clears throat> all during the school year. We haven't done them in the summer yet, but they're BC-based, but we have participants who join us from all over the world. They are one-week online professional, free professional development events that are created by educators for educators. And um, you know, though when you at the end of the week, you get a, a certificate for having participated in the Moodle Meet. If that's if, if that's interesting to you, we're all we're always open to um, ideas for. For new meets, this year we did one on GeoGebra. There have been a couple on actually using Moodle. There was just one on um, on uh, uh, cyber safety. Uh, the next one coming up is on smart boards. And then there is one, I think, on project-based learning still to come and also on instructional design to come this year. 
So, you know, please go to the Seat Ming, capital C-E-E-T, Ming, and if you click on the top link in the center, that will take you to the professional development events and right into the Moodle meets. And then Seat is um, kind of the our local BC homegrown version of Classroom 2.0, and we encourage people to carry on discussions through Seat um, after the Moodle meets are over. So please do come and join us. And um, say, I just think that this particular one is so exciting because to join um, with uh, Classroom 2.0 has been uh, a super experience for us. Great, thank you. Thank you for sharing. We appreciate that. It's been a great experience for us as well. I'm a Windows girl at heart. I just can't totally commit to loving Max as much as I'm trying to. And I remember when I was teaching third graders how to use Photo Story, and I taught it to them in like 30 minutes. And one of the students came to me and said, I recorded it. I don't know what happened. I'm the one who did it, but something happened. And we were like, what? What happened? He goes, I recorded it. I said the words, but something happened, and my voice changed. It's not my voice. And uh, he was just so surprised that um, what he recorded and what he heard were t two different things, this little third grader. So we had a good laugh about that. Are there any other questions um, before we let Shambles uh, go to sleep? Anything, any anecdotes that you'd like to share with us? Yes, uh, Louise, as soon as you exit the session, uh, there's a survey and you can put in your information and Shambles, uh, you can, what is your um, Twitter name, Shambles Guru? There we go. Great. Um, it's right there on the screen. So thank you so much, everyone. We hope that you will join us next week at the same time when we're going to have our next featured teacher session. So have a great weekend, everybody. And enjoy the rest of your Saturday, whether you're going to enjoy the afternoon or go to sleep like Shambles and his game. We've really enjoyed everybody today. Um, if you're attending the Moodle Meet, thank you so much um, for popping over and joining our crew. We uh, appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. We will see you online. Have a great week. See you next Saturday.